How to learn human anatomy for a medical student planning a career in a hospital specialty. So this is for a particular type of medical student. Now, before I go any further, I would like to say that if you haven't seen my previous video titled How to Learn Human Anatomy for a Medical Student, please do view it. This video is an extension of the previous one, and there's certain things I've mentioned in the previous one that I will be briefly going through in this video, and you will need that knowledge. All right, so this video is for those medical students who plan to go into a hospital-based specialty. As mentioned right here, this group in my previous video was called the Maximum Anatomy Learning Group. So this video is useful for medical students starting in first year. This video is actually also useful for medical students that are later, that could be later in their learning in first year or second year or third year, even up to fourth year, because this gives a brief outline of what you should be doing through all the four years. Okay, so the Maximum Anatomy Learning Group. So these medical students need to learn the maximum amount of anatomy in medical school uh, because they're going into a hospital specialty. So what is maximum anatomy? So how much anatomy does a medical student need to know who wants to specialize in a hospital specialty? How much is maximum amount of human anatomy? So that, that is the question, and that is the first question. That we, need to, that we need to ask ourselves and have some sort of an answer for, and then we can think about how to learn it. So what is maximum human anatomy? And there is no final answer to this question. It is still being debated in the medical education communities that how much anatomy should a medical student know? And that is what my previous video also spoke about. So you please do watch that if you haven't, haven't watched it. Now, medical schools tend to focus on curriculum needed for the majority of the students. And in my previous video, I mentioned the majority of the students will be going into, uh, from, from the Australian perspective where I am, will be going into general practice. And so majority of students are not going into specialties. So student going into specialties are not the majority. So medical schools actually may never, medical schools may never address the issue of anatomy learning for hospital practice because it doesn't cover the majority. And the curriculum is based, because the same standard curriculum for everybody in that medical institution, it sort of focuses on the, 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 the broad, sort of the broad majority of students. So uh, medical students that want to go into specialty are a minority. It, will, it, it may never be addressed. So anatomy needs to be learned by medical students that go into a specialty. So we have postgraduate uh, education bodies uh, like HETI in Australia. And these bodies are responsible for all education for medical specialty trainees even even maybe even, I believe even for GPS but I'm not too sure so these are the bodies that actually look after anatomy education uh, when you're training as as a, as a doctor but my personal opinion is graduates planning to go into specialties should complete their anatomy learning before graduation because I personally believe it actually can also be done and then they walk in knowing that subject and they don't need to later on uh, study more or they can actually spend that time learning other important things which are skills on the job so <laughs> Again, what is maximum human anatomy? And this is just my opinion of it. And, and this is for, you know, uh, medical students that want to go into specialties. They should know the anatomical basis of all common diseases that present in the hospital. The rare ones can be omitted uh, and should be omitted. Know the anatomical basis of all the common procedures practiced in hospital. Uh, and not just the procedures expected to be performed by an intern. Most medical schools do cover this aspect, that the procedures expected to be performed by interns, they do learn those procedures, and because they learn those procedures, they understand the anatomy of those procedures. But the anatomical basis of all the common procedures practiced in hospital, I mean, you don't need to be able to do those procedures, you just need to know what they are, what are they done for, and what are the anatomical aspects of those procedures. Okay, a bit more. Let's keep going. Know how to read a CT of the head, thorax, and abdomen. 
Now, this is something that I've discussed with um, my own uh, batchmates that are, you know, that are consultants now, and even my own students that later on are now consultants and, uh, and, and consultants in the hospital. And a few discussions with them have said, and they've said that knowing how to read a CT of the head, thorax and the abdomen should be a basic skill. Uh, but when you, you come up with these things in, in discussions, but actually getting that into medical curriculum is just a, a, a very, very, very long and, and, and difficult task because of, because of the amount of paperwork needed. But being able to read a CT of the head, thorax and abdomen is, is, is truly a skill that training doctors need to know. Uh, and, and so what do you need to be able to, so in medical school, what should you be able to do? You should be able to identify common diseases in the above CTs. That's a skill that training doctors need to have. However, diagnosing and proper radiological reporting, reporting of the findings on CT, I don't feel is necessary uh, uh, at the medical school level, because this is something that, that you will only be doing once you choose a specialty and once you start training in a specialty. So being able to truly diagnose them and, and proper radiological, well, proper radiological reporting is a job of the radiologist. So that is actually not a job of the specialist either. But the specialist should be able to diagnose and should be able to write proper radiological reports also if need be, because they are specialists in that area. However, I feel that in medical school, being able to identify common diseases in, in the head, thorax and abdomen, and before that, being able to read it completely... Uh, is is uh, is an appropriate skill, uh, but uh, not diagnosing or proper radiological reporting. That I would say that is not necessary. Now this is an ongoing debate, and uh, what is the amount of human anatomy which I call the maximum human anatomy that is needed for uh, medical graduates to actually that want to train into hospital specialties? What is it? So as it is an ongoing debate, please do share your thoughts in the comments and I would love to read them and we can have a good discussion on them. And I'm sure, you know, more interesting things will come from it. Okay, let's keep going. So knowing the anatomical basis of all common diseases, this is the first, first thing that I mentioned up here. Knowing the anatomical basis of all diseases. So how would you do that? So in my previous um, lecture, I have mentioned... Uh, the complete anatomy resources, which I call complete anatomy resources. I've gotten examples of them. Uh, more clinically orient oriented anatomy is a book. Um, uh, 3D4 uh, Medical is, is a website. Anatomy Media is also our own, very own Australian uh, online resource. These are complete anatomy resources, and these resources will cover all the normal anatomy and the relevance to common illnesses. So these resources are actually very good to use to know the anatomical basis of all common diseases. They will cover it. So if you've gone through this resource uh, page to page, yes, I do, int I do expect you to actually not use it for reference, but actually go through the whole resource then yes, you will know the anatomical basis of all common diseases. So this is one way, probably the only way, to actually learn this aspect of maximum anatomy. Okay, let's keep going. Knowing the anatomical basis of all common procedures, which was the second point that I made, uh, the complete anatomy resources that I've mentioned uh, in my previous slide and I've gone through in detail in my previous video, uh, the complete anatomy resources cover most of this, but they don't cover all of this. Uh, what is left is available online through various other resources, which can be fairly e uh, compiled fairly easily, but it has not actually been compiled. So that does do that does need to be compiled, and uh, uh, maybe it's a task that I take on. Maybe I I don't I can't I can't uh, promise that. But uh, but I have to say I've mentioned in my previous lecture that Google is a really good resource, and internet search is a really good resource if you know what you're looking for. And so anatomical basis of all common procedures actually you will find online. There are there uh, in appropriate detail um, for a medical student. Not a layperson. I mean, for a layperson, they're obviously there. But for for a, for a medical student, they're there in appropriate detail, and you can find them. 
However, it would be easy if the list was available, uh, uh, and the list does not exist, and you need to you need to go finding it <laughs> according to whatever you're uh, currently studying at the time. However, the complete anatomy resources do cover most of these procedures. They truly do cover most of these procedures, but not all of them. And the few that are left, they are the ones that need to be compiled. All right, number three: How to read a CT of the head, abdomen, and pelvis. Now, this is something. That is, uh, is 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 a, a particular issue because this is not taught in any of the complete anatomy resources that I've mentioned previously. Medical schools do also do not teach this skill. And uh, and as I've mentioned here, radiological education using cross-sectional slides of CTs and MRIs are not enough for learning the skill. One must be able to scroll scroll through a whole CT and identify normal and abnormal anatomy. What I mean to say is that when you go to your medical education, you will see images like these uh, in, your, in, your, in your PBL cases or in your anatomy lectures or even in your radiology lectures or pathology lectures. And they'll mention things like, oh, there's the kidney and there's the liver, etc. And there's, you know, vertebra. But uh, it's, you, you, it's not to be able to read a CT of the head, abdomen, pelvis, you can't just see one cross section. You have to be able to scroll through a whole CT, which are multiple sections uh, up and down, and actually uh, be able to read that whole thing like that and understand the normal anatomy. And, um, uh, and, and, and that is the skill that you need to know. All hospital trainees will need to learn the skill at some point. So being able to scroll through a CT of the head, abdomen, pelvis, uh, hospital trainees will be doing it in their in their training years, um, and it has to be learned. As I said, that I uh, that I encourage this skill that medical students who have decided that they're going to hospital uh, training should actually do this uh, in medical school. So how would you do this? It can be done with online resources already available. And so that brings me to the next slide, which I'd like to mention, Radiopedia. A lot of you may have seen this because uh, Radiopedia is actually quite quite a famous website. And I, I, I remember it started off about 12, 13 years ago, and it was really small, but now it's actually become a, quite, a very great online resource for radiological information. A lot of it is free. It is a bit hard to... It is a bit hard to find the things you need, uh, uh, the way it's organized, but nonetheless, it's got immense information. It's a great website, and I highly, highly recommend it. It's designed for radiographers and radiologists mainly. It is designed for them. However, they do understand that uh, there that there are going to be a lot of uh, doctors that are not radiologists that also need to learn this stuff. And so there, there, there are quality radiology teaching videos catered for training doctors, uh, not just radiologists, particularly um, and, and particularly the course that is medical imaging anatomy course. If you go to Radiopedia and you find the medical imaging anatomy course, they've got lots of courses, but this particular one is purely anatomical. And, uh, and this course is about eight hours of video, uh, and, and this actually goes through uh, uh, all the general anatomy that uh, anybody, uh, that a training doctor should know. Uh, and uh, uh, other courses, as I mentioned, are too advanced and are suited for the radiology or the radiography training. Um, and so, um, and so that is not something I would recommend. Just the medical imaging anatomy course is an option. You can you can learn radiology through that. Uh, they have quizzes which are reasonably reasonable quality quizzes. There are better quizzes than than that, and I will also show you those. It's not free, as uh, very few things are, but it's reasonably priced. For, I think about $60, you can have all the videos and quizzes for this particular course. But I think it's time limited, either anywhere from three months to six months or maybe one year. So uh, decide when you need to learn this and then spend that money and then learn. So this is one. This is, this is a complete option, actually, to, to do this. There are other websites and even YouTube pages, including my own, that also um, shows a lot of radiology, but they are not complete. This is actually very good. It actually goes through all the uh, important imaging necessary uh, uh, for, for, for the whole body, actually. So this is, this is actually a good, good course. 
Okay, then it brings me to I am AIOS. Uh, you can Google this too. I am AIOS contains a complete radiological atlas. It's actually very, very good. Uh, and this is an example of what it looks like. However, you can scroll through these images as it shows down there and, and you can follow all these different structures. Uh, and you know you can turn some off and turn some on. I, 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 if you if you go to it, it's really nicely done. It's it's well organized. It's great for reviewing normal radiological anatomy. So what I would recommend is after watching the Radiopedia videos and doing Radiopedia quizzes. Radiopedia quizzes aren't as extensive as this. Quiz your knowledge using the IMAIOS radiological atlas. So go into that atlas and actually scroll through it and go through all the structures and do the IMAIOS radiological uh, quizzes. Uh, it's not free, but it's actually quite affordable, about 70, uh, so, sorry, not $77 a month, and um, it will give you access to, to all, 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 the, um, all the structures. Uh, however, yeah, you can always go to the website and you can see how it is structured. It won't give you all these all these structures names. It'll be cut out, but you will. But it will show you how it's structured, like the whole program is structured. So how to use it. So go have a look, and and see what you think about it. But there is no other complete atlas as good as I am AIOS under uh, uh, from what I have seen uh, available on the internet. If you feel there is, or if you'd like to add on something else, please do mention in the comments. Okay, next, case stacks. What do you do with case stacks? Uh, this is a brilliant resource for radiology cases. Radiopedia also has very good radiology cases, but this is organized much better. It's complete with radiological report and diagnoses. So you, they will give you the findings and they will give you the diagnoses. And I would recommend that after you've done the radiology videos from Radiopedia and done the Radiopedia quiz, and then you've done the IMA iOS quiz, like after you've done this, and after you've done this, come to case stacks and go through all the cases. Now, there's two ways to go. They've got thousands of cases, so maybe not that way. But they're, they're, if you go to case stacks, you will realize that for every area, like in your neurology, thorax, abdomen, uh, for every particular area, there are about 60, 70 cases. And those are the common radiological illnesses uh, that you will see. And so... They, they're actually I, really good. So view the, go through all the cases, view the radiological finding. You, they'll, they'll give the case and you'll have a scrollable CT to go through. Uh, and you can read the findings and see w whether you can view them or not. And because they've given you the findings, you should be able to view them. And then understand the anatomical basis of each case. So they'll give you the diagnosis also, like acute left ACA and MCA territory infarct, which is right here. And so they'll, they'll also give you uh, uh, the, um, they'll also give you the diagnosis. So the objective is that you do, you, you what, what the objective isn't, let me say that, you do not need to be able to diagnose or report radiological findings in med school. Even as a training doctor, you are learning that. Uh, so, you, so don't try to diagnose uh, or report radiological findings. Um, what you need to do is after you've learned the anatomy and you've done the quizzes and reinforced the anatomy, come and see if you can view the pathology. If you can't view the pathology, they've given you the findings. See, find the findings and then understand the anatomical basis of the disease. That if it is an acute left ACA and MCA territory infarct, what does that mean? How, 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 is, how did the anterior cerebral artery or middle cerebral artery get an inf infarct or thrombus or, or hemorrhage? And if it is, what is the outcome, etc. So understand the anatomical basis of the disease and, and read the findings, which it's a drop down menu that isn't drop down here and see if you can see those findings. Now, if you can do that for most for the most of the cases in case stacks and uh, you can do it for all of them, but especially if you've done head, thorax and abdomen, then you are really good to go. Um, now, case tax is not cheap. It's not free, but it's not cheap either. It's about $30 a month, which is just like, I mean, it's just terrible. Uh, but um, maybe if you've done your, if you've done your Radiopedia uh, and you've done your IMAIOS, uh, then you can sort of plan 
uh, it won't you, you won't be able to go through the cases in a month, especially if you're already studying stuff like that. But maybe in three three months you might actually be able to go through them. As a matter of fact, you, I mean, if you were really organized and you had some spare time, even in a month, it can be done. So how to do it and um so this is just this is just my advice and here you know as I, I found this motivation speech study hard until you can say i'm a doctor everything is going to be all right you're gonna you're gonna need this while you're in medical school but that said don't study too hard one thing that happens in medical school is the amount of information that that is given to you you could study day and night 24 hours a day you would still not cover it so Medical students and, you know, further on in your interns or training doctors, they burn out. And why do they burn out? Because it's never, it's never enough. So my, my, my first advice is that, uh, as I mentioned in my previous lecture also, that medical students are top, top people. And not only are they going to study in a full-time curriculum, which they're happy to do, they will put in extra hours. So go ahead, put in extra hours, but don't, even if you put in those extra hours, the study will not be complete. You have to accept that. You've put in your extra hours. You've, I mean, you've done your full-time course. You've put in your extra hours, and you're still like, oh, I could have done this. I need this to be done. This isn't finished. Oh, I need to learn this. you got to let it go. That is my first advice. After you've done, you've gone, you've done, you spent your day at uni, you've done your full nine to five or eight to six even, and uh, and then you put in another few hours, you put in a few hours in the weekend, organize your time, add in those extra hours, use that time study, and then whatever is left, just let it go. Don't 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 be upset about it. And and that is the only way to prevent yourself from burnout. Otherwise, you'll just keep going. And make sure to have a healthy diet and some exercise. Furthermore, once you understand that, so as as, as much as this motivation speech study hard until you can say i'm a doctor everything's going to be all right that's fine study hard but don't overdo it and understand that even with your hard study things will not be complete they're never complete you just have to accept that and let it go you'll be fine you'll pass all your exams it's very hard to fail in medical school okay use the first two years to complete the complete anatomy resources of your choice as i've mentioned in the previous lecture find a complete anatomy resource find one that I've also mentioned in a previous lecture, don't find many. They all do the same thing in a different way, but you, you can't use all each, every different one. Just find one. Don't worry about memory of all the facts. You will not remember them, and it is okay. Anatomy is a memory game. It's a structural game, and you will not remember it. Anatomy is easily forgotten and is only remembered through repetition uh, and through clinical experience. So... If you don't remember, it's fine. As long as you went through it once and understood it. If, it. if you've forgotten it, it is somewhere in your mind. And when you are exposed to it again, you will recall it. And that is how you reinforce it. If you're exposed to it and that's the first time you're learning it, then you will have to be exposed to it again. So uh, uh, use the two years to complete the anatomy resource of your choice, but don't worry about the fact that you can't remember it. It is fine. Uh, don't Memory is not your objective. Understanding is your objective. Anatomy is easily forgotten. Again, as I say, only remember through repetition, through clinical experience, when you will, when, when you, when you are, when you see this, when you see it in your actual work, then you will recall it and that's how it's remembered. So when you're studying anatomy initially in your first two years, don't worry about memory of the fact. I have to reinforce it because this is one of the most, uh, uh, this is one of the things that m medical students get most stressed about. Okay, so in the first two years of your medical school, in the preclinical years, just do a complete anatomy resource. Don't worry about radiology. In the next two years, once you've done the clinical years, start watching the Radiopedia videos and complete the quizzes. Do the IMA IOS quizzes and go through case stacks. Now, again, this is in the next two years. So find your time in your clinical years to do this. Now, remember, again, you do not need to diagnose. All I am focusing on, I'm saying no memory, do not need to diagnose. What I'm saying is you just need to understand. That is the objective of a medical student. You don't need to diagnose or memorize. Just be able to visualize the abnormality on your CTs. 
understand the radiological description, like whatever findings and uh, they give you, just understand what they mean by them. And you will understand them. They're not too difficult to understand. And conceptualize the anatomical basis of disease. So it's all about understanding and, uh, uh, um, and conceptualizing. It's not about memory. And it is not about you being able to practically use your uh, knowledge yet. To be able to practically use your knowledge, which is to diagnose and to be able to have a radiological description, that will happen in your training years. So I am trying to prepare you for your training years, not what happens in the training years. So if you finish this, then your training years will become very easy because that's where you'll be focusing on diagnosing and appropriate radiological descriptions. Before that, just understand the anatomy. If you don't do that before, then when it comes to this point, you will actually have to understand the anatomy first and then get to this. During all the years of medical school, keep applying your knowledge to all of other learn all your other learnings and clinical experiences. What I mean to say is that it, there is an anatomical basis of almost every disease. There are a few diseases that don't have an anatomical basis, but most diseases do. So whatever you're learning, and because you're doing most of this in your own time, without a medical school um, uh, curriculum organizing this for you, whatever you learn, whatever the medical school curriculum is organizing for you, or whatever you experience in your clinical years, whatever knowledge you've learned, you you will you will keep apply keep applying it um, in your experiences, and you know that that happens without saying really. All right. And if you've done that, you are ready for specialist training. Obviously, you will go into your intern years. And in your intern years, you will see that your anatomy uh, is really above um, uh, the others. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be competitive here. But what you will understand is that your anatomy isn't a problem. However, this isn't an easy task. And it is a mammoth task. This isn't easy and it's a mammoth task. However, it can be done through proper planning and organization. So that is another discussion we can have. How do you plan this and how you organize this? But at least you know what the resources are. I'm also here to help with any anatomy learning needs. So, you know, come uh, to uh, this YouTube page and uh, share the comments. Come to my website if, with any, if you have any questions. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, share your thoughts in the comments and we'll see what we can do. And uh, that's about uh, all I have to say, except that I have no associations with any of the businesses mentioned in this video. I actually have used these uh, businesses myself and they are very good, uh, but no, I am not associated with them. There is no conflict of interest here. And thank you very much. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Goodbye.